Hello friends, in my previous video, we have seen about units and dimensions. Hope you all understood it well. In this video, we are going to deal with a force. A force with which we all are familiar. What are its uses, causes and what are the types? About all these, we are going to discuss in this video. So let's not waste the time and start the video. I welcome you all to Stardom Diploma. Friction We all are familiar with this word. We hear this word many times, right? We generally hear people saying that an accident occurred there due to less friction. And also, due to more friction, the machinery got damaged. But actually, what is friction? When this word friction strikes our mind, we get a thing that it is an opposing force, right? Yes, we get the thing that friction is a kind of opposing force that opposes the applied force. That is, the force which we are applying. We see friction almost everywhere in our daily routine. We are able to walk on the ground that is because of friction. We are able to hold things that is also because of friction. Vehicles are moving safely on the road without causing any accidents. We are able to write on the blackboard with a chalk. And even a matchstick is lightened due to friction. You are understanding right? How important friction is in our daily life. Now let us see its definition. The resistive force that occurs between two surfaces in contact and opposes the relative motion between them is called as friction. It means when two objects are in contact. That means when two objects are kept together and when we apply force on it, friction is a phenomena that resists the applied force. If we are trying to push the object towards left, if the object is not moving, that means if the object is not changing its position, then there is some force which is opposing the applied force, which is opposing my force. That force which is opposing the applied force is called as friction. And also frictional force is tangential to the surfaces in contact. That means at the point of contact, when two sub objects are in contact, at the point of contact, the frictional force is tangential. And another important point is that all surfaces are not perfectly smooth. See how much ever the surface looks to be smooth, but there would have some minute ups and downs. See if we take a plain white paper, it looks to be smooth. If we touch also, we feel that the paper is smooth. But the actual, the reality is that the paper is also having some minute ups and downs, minute irregularities. These irregularities are causing friction. Because when another object is kept on that paper, the object is standing on the paper. It means the object is not sliding. It is not sliding. Because the minute irregularities got interlocked with the irregularities of the paper. Due to this interlocking, friction is occurring there. That means if the ups and downs are more, the rate of friction will also be more. Now only we have took two cases. That is accident due to less friction and damage of the machinery due to more friction. If we observe by these two sentences, we can tell that the rate of friction is not same at all times and at all places. It varies due to some factors. Here, we are having some factors that influence friction. The first one, the materials in contact. The nature of the materials will influence the friction. That means if the material is smooth, then the object will move easily when we are applying some force. If the material is rough, 
if its surface is not smooth then interlocking will also occur so the friction will also be more so the nature of material also varies the friction second one the nature of the sliding surfaces the surface on which the body is sliding if the surface is smooth then friction will be less if the surface is rough then friction will also be more the third one the force with which the bodies are pressed it means the amount of force applied will also vary if we are applying more force the object position will also move more distance if we are applying more force friction will become less you can say that the applied force is inversely proportional to friction if we are applying more force friction will be less if we are applying less force friction will be more and the other factor is degree of polishing the surfaces in contact see if the surfaces are much polished they will move easily polishing is nothing but decreasing the irregularities see if irregularities are decreased there will be less ups and downs and if there are less ups and downs friction will automatically be less by which the object can move easily so if we take examples uh the tiles which are in our bathroom and the tiles which are in our houses are different the tiles in the bathroom are rough than the tiles in the hall see there are much chances of slipping down in the bathroom so the tiles are made in such a way that we can stand on them even in the presence of water and inside the house that is if we take hall the tiles are much polished if water is felt we easily fall down whereas in bathroom the tiles are not much polished they are rough so even in the presence of water we don't fall down so we can tell that degree of polishing of the surfaces is one important factor which is influencing friction see if the surface is more polished friction will be less and if the surface is less polished friction will be more we have seen the factors which are influencing friction but what are the causes of this friction we are having three important causes of friction those are surface roughness ploughing effect and molecular adhesion we we'll learn it one by one first surface roughness surface roughness is when serious abrasion occurs due to the roughness of the materials in contact we already learned that all the materials are not smooth there are some irregularities due to the in interlocking between these irregularities friction is occurring so when two objects are kept in contact and when we are applying some force due to the varying degrees of the surface roughness friction is occurring there second one is ploughing effect this effect occurs when one or both the materials are relatively soft in the process of resistance the object since it is soft gets deformed see we know that friction is opposing force it resists the applied force so when we are applying some force the object is resisting it in the process of this resistance the object get deformed and this deformation is causing the friction to happen this effect is known as ploughing effect if we take example if we keep our leg on a carpet or a rug the area on which our leg is placed gets sink that means our leg is placed on the carpet means a force is applied by our leg on the carpet in the process of resisting the applied force the carpet gets sink 
that means the shape of the carpet is changed this deformation is causing the friction the next one and the last cause is molecular adhesion adhesion is nothing but the attracting forces between the molecule so molecular adhesion refers to the molecular force that results from two materials brought into close contact with one another see when two objects are brought together the molecular forces cause the friction see molecular attracting forces means the object gets attracted to the other object so since there is some attracting forces even we apply a force the object hardly moves that means a friction is occurring there see if we take an example if you take a glass full of water and if you drink the complete water even if you turn the glass also there would be some drops stick to, to the surface of the glass the drops are sticked to the surface due to molecular adhesion the water molecules are attracted to the surface of the glass due to some friction so if we want to slide the object against each other it is essential to break these adhesive bonds the adhesive forces need to be breaked first then only the object will slide over another these are the all three causes of friction hope you are able to understand friends next we are moving to types of friction we are having three types of friction static friction kinetic friction or sliding friction and the third one is rolling friction static friction the force of friction which opposes the tendency of one body to move relative to the other is called static friction see we know what is friction friction is a resistive force so what is static friction the word static means stationary there is no change in the position of the body so when the friction is equal to the applied force the body remains stationary that means the body does not change its position this type of friction in which the body is stationary even though an applied force is there is called static friction so we can tell that static friction is a type of friction in which the body does not tends to move along the applied force the static friction is equal and opposite to applied force yes see we have already read about free body diagrams see if the applied force is 5 newtons and frictional force if it is 2 newton it is simple we know it the body will move in the direction of the applied force in the same case if we, the applied force is 5 newtons and the frictional force is also 5 newtons then in which direction the body will move yes the body will be stationary why because the applied force is equal to the frictional force and since it is in the opposite direction the body will remain stationary and another part of this static friction is the limiting friction it is a maximum value of static friction that develops on the body when the body just tends to slide over the surface of another body if we try to understand limiting friction is a point at which the body which is in stationary position just begins to slide means when the body just begins its motion at that point the static friction is said to be limiting friction and the second type of friction is called as kinetic friction kinetic friction is also called as sliding friction or dynamic friction now what is this kinetic friction see the first one was static friction the name itself suggests that it causes the body to remain stationary the second one is sliding friction or nothing but the kinetic friction its name also gives us an idea that it is present between two bodies in contact when one body is sliding over the other 
its definition is the frictional force which is present between two surfaces in contact when one body slides over another body is called kinetic or sliding friction see first the body static friction and when its value increased that is in limiting friction the body started to move now even after overcoming this limiting friction also the body requires some force to remain in uniform motion this force is nothing but our sliding friction sliding friction is the force required to make the body move in uniform motion friends it is little bit confusing no we'll take an example and we'll understand it okay now we want to pull a box tied with a rope we want to move it from point a to point b the first the box was stationary that means it is in static friction and we are pulling it with a rope the box just moved we read it in limiting friction the box that means the object tends to move it begin to move here the box which we are pulling was first stationary when we are applying force and when we are pulling it it started to move now we want to take it from point a to point b we want to cover the distance so if we want to cover the distance the force should be same and the friction should be uniform so at the point of limiting friction the box just moved but it is not enough that it is moving a little small distance we want to move it from point a to point b so the amount of friction should also be same at the whole distance in the whole path the amount of friction should be uniform this friction which is allowing to move the box at that desired position friction required is called sliding friction you are understanding right to move the box from point a to point b we require a force of friction to the whole path the amount of friction should be same this same friction is called sliding friction hope you all understood right the first one was static friction the second one was kinetic friction and the third one the third type of friction is called rolling friction when one body rolls over the surface of another body the frictional force between the surfaces in contact is called rolling friction rolling friction occurs between rolling body when one body is rolling on another body there we observe rolling friction rolling friction is very much less than kinetic friction and it is inversely proportional to radius of rolling body it means if the radius of the body is more rolling friction will be less that a huge radius body is moving since its radius is more rolling friction will be less so it will be easily move large distance and if its radius is less rolling friction will be more and its value decreases if the area of contact is small if less area of contact will be there its value will also be small yes friends the remaining concepts will see it in the next video and this was today's video hope you all start the topic if you still have any doubt or have any suggestions feel free to post it in the comment section below please support my channel and don't forget to like share and subscribe even press the bell icon to get new updates okay friends see you all in the next video